Well, hello, hello, and welcome to Games Revisited. I am your host, Anon Jr. Well, welcome to Interludes. Uh, this is the between the seasons kind of little bit, just the way everything finished with uh, Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic and the end of the year and the start of the new year and all that good fun stuff. I didn't really have, I didn't want to get in the middle of a new season, do the Christmas break, New Year thing, and then get back to it because I, I, I know things are going to get crazy. Uh, I also wanted an opportunity to try out a new format for the series. So what we're going to do is we're going to try to record. Uh, we're, basically, we're going to run the stream in 20 minute sections. So we'll do 20 minutes. I'll actually do a closeout and then we'll start back up again. So if you're watching live, do make sure that you uh, stay with me the whole way through because um, I, I'm basically going to record five, five or six episodes back to back to back. And when I upload to YouTube, instead of uploading one giant two hour stream, I am going to upload uh, five to six 20 minute streams or 20 minute episodes uh so you get to see everything that's coming in the week and then uh that way it's not a, a big scary looking thing to watch and if you really do want to catch up you can the stream archives will be available uh all that good fun stuff and so with with that little bit of housekeeping out of the way we're gonna start by taking a look at some of the games of my youth uh <laughs> Yes, I am old. Uh, <laughs> beginning with my second game console, but the one that more people are likely to be familiar with who are watching, and that is the Nintendo Entertainment System, the NES. If you remember blowing dust out of a game cartridge and wiggling everything just so in the hopes that you wouldn't get that flashing red light, um, welcome, enjoy. If you remember that uncomfortable boxy controller, uh, unless, you know, you had the money to buy that more uh, curved precursor to the modern controller with the turbo buttons and all that. Um, welcome to the Aged Club. And we're going to start with a game that came with every NES system that was released, in the U.S. at least. Uh, and that is Super Mario Brothers. Believe it or not, this is actually a sequel. There was a Mario Brothers that was released on the Atari and in the arcade. Um, when I go to do my Atari episodes, yeah, <laughs> push, push, blow, wiggle, wiggle. Yeah, exactly. Um, if, um, yeah. If I can find the game, I will try to make sure to include it on the Atari one that I do for Christmas. That one's most likely going to be pre-recorded. Uh, I was originally going to start at this go round and go, you know, through the sequence of game systems I owned, except there were four game systems in only three weeks, and I'm pretty sure there weren't enough TurboGrafx-16 fans to even know what I was talking about, so I'm skipping that one, sad to say. Uh, I'll hit a couple of the games that were cross-ported to the various platforms that were around at the time. And uh, the Atari content is going to be short. So I'll do that as the pre-record for uh, Christmas Eve. Just because a lot of the games are very simple, very straightforward, and not as much fun to watch on a stream like this. So, be ready for a fantastic display of my poor reflexes as we uh, start a one-player game. And the infamous World 1-1. And that eternally, eternal music. Um, those of you not old enough to know, games never actually included a tutorial. So what the designers had to do is they had to make sure that World 1-1 showed you all the things you needed to know about how the game works. So you're presented with obstacles like small jumps, things to, things to jump on, you notice they only throw one Goomba at, you at a time and then maybe two. So you kind of get the hang for what you're supposed to do. And, and the, the, whole, the whole focus of the design for World 1-1 was to make sure that you got a tutorial and a level. And it influenced the way a lot of games were made uh, for years to come. And... Oh, no run. 
that's right. <laughs> this is long before there was a, a dash and a run and that sort of stuff. Oh, ye olden days. Oh, but that beautiful finishing music. Now you gotta remember that this is in 1983. No, 1985, 86. Uh, depending on where you were in the world. Um, this was the height of gaming. Matter of fact, some of the design element I didn't realize it until doing a little research before the show. Some of the design elements for, um, for the actual U.S. release of the game system were designed to help, <laughs> help bring the U.S. out of its, um, crisis. Uh, there was a big video game crash. Atari took their lead and, and killed it. Um, through a variety of decisions and other fun stuff. I'm trying to remember. There we go. Oh yeah, that's, that's why I didn't want to break so many blocks. Ha! Oh yeah, I gotta stretch the memory on this one. There were little hidden things here and there. All sorts of other fun obstacles. Oh, that's right, I missed it. Oh, yeah, and I almost forgot. One of the other fun features of this side-scrolling adventure is there is no going back. You move forward. If you missed it, you missed it. Too bad, so sad. Um, this is the heyday of the 2D side-scroller. Everything's two-dimensional. You're running from left to right or right to left. And, oh, oh yeah, there we go, good. They also had these fun little hidden warp zones where you'd skip ahead to different worlds if you weren't so inclined to play it level by level. And the original game had a glitch where if you did some funky stuff with uh, block collision timing and jumping and other stuff like that, you could actually set it up so you would warp to world negative one, uh, which was very much a glitch. It, it was not a thing. It was, I mean, it was a thing in that you could get there, but it was not a thing in that it was not a place you were supposed to be. And uh, you, you would basically end up in this unwinnable world uh, where there was no... It, there was no end. Oh yeah, that's right. That didn't kill him, man. That came later. My hilariously poor reflexes. Oh, and the controller I'm using is uh, dyslexic. The one I, the one I'm using right now is modeled after um, the the Sony PlayStation controllers. The problem is the A and the B are backwards from where they were on the Nintendo consoles. Uh, technically, I could probably remap them so that way you know B is A and A is B. Up is down, and left is right, and all that good fun. Um, but, uh, yeah, I'm not going to do that. Oh, that's right. Oh. Did I miss it already? I think I missed it already. Because I was definitely supposed to get on the roof somewhere around here. No. Okay, good. Because there, there were a couple of really easy ways to get... Uh, pretty far in in the game in fairly short order. This is probably one of the most famous Nintendo games with one of the most famous Nintendo characters. And many, many, many hours were wasted playing this time trial. Now, you see, kids, before you had your fancy save points, you just had to make it through the game with the lives you got. Because <laughs> there was no saving. 
There was no... Oh, that looks dangerous. And, and yes, I am a hypocritical hypocrite because that's exactly what I did during uh, the Star Wars sagas. I fully took advantage of that. I, I won't pretend otherwise. Oh, yeah, I totally mistimed that one. And this will probably be the end of the run uh, before too long here because there are two other games I want to get to but first this is where uh, this is where many of the iconic parts of Mario were first introduced because you know <laughs> oh there we go okay anyway um, yeah this is where a lot of the more iconic parts uh, of Mario's came through because a lot of the, the power-ups and that sort of thing, that wasn't a thing when uh, Mario Brothers first hit the arcades. And even the preceding iterations of Mario as a part of Donkey Kong and you know just the, the arcade and Atari versions of the various games. Um, oh, visual glitch is still about. <laughs> So, before I, you know, let's go ahead and do this last jump. One last jump. One more minute. <laughs> oh, mom. Come on. One more jump. One more jump. Just one more. Just a little bit more. <laughs> there was some sequence or code to why you got those explosions when, when you got the fireworks when you did I want to say it was something to do with um, with the score if it was divisible by a certain number you got so many fireworks and that kind of stuff but uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to close out of Mario Brothers and oh you know gonna... Of course, I'm going to hit the right button. There we go. And oh, this is going to take a minute um, because for some reason, RetroArch does not like uh, loading up some of my stuff. So we'll go here doo -doo, where I've got stuff hiding in Dropbox. And we're going to move to the sequel to Mario Brothers, and that was Super Mario Brothers 2, which, uh, depending on who you ask, was either really popular or really not. Part of this is because um, Nintendo was trying to do a really advanced cooperative game where instead of just going from left to right, you also went up and down. And two players could work together to lift each other up and throw each other over obstacles and around obstacles and stack stuff and all sorts of stuff and it proved to be a little too much for a game system with an 8-bit microprocessor and two kilobytes of RAM. That's right, two kilobytes. There's 1,024 kilobytes in a megabyte. So consider that you're uh, oh yeah and there's 1024 megabytes in a gigabyte and consider the 20 gigs worth of Skyrim you probably downloaded back when that came out <laughs> we've uh, we've come a little ways so yeah all the games that we're doing today were designed to run on an 8-bit microprocessor working within two kilobytes of RAM most of the cartridges were about a kilobyte, maybe half that. Um, so anyway, we got the sequel, which uh, since the original idea proved a little too ambitious, it was uh, repackaged as a little bit of a game show type deal. And you, you have some familiar looking characters here. Uh, you pick who you're gonna play at the beginning. Each of them have different special abilities, like uh, the princess can hover, toadstool picks stuff up faster, 
Uh, Luigi jumps higher, Mario jumps further. So let's go ahead and pick Mario, since it is his game after all. And you'll notice a little bit of a change in graphics. We're, we're, fine. we're starting to get to a point at this area where... Um, I don't remember which button is what. We're starting to get a little bit better handle on what you can and can't do with um, with an 8-bit microprocessor. What you can and can't do with the graphics. How how to best get the kind of animation choices we want. You know, this is the first chance we finally get to start climbing stuff and go up. And you'll notice we can actually go back as well. All right, was this it? Yes. And you had these fun little hidden doors where if you did it at just the right place, you could pick up mushrooms that would give you an extra hit. You see those uh, red blips on the side? That's how many times you can get hit before you did. We'll get to the cherries in a little bit later. We started getting a few extra items. Uh, the POW is a nice little blast from the past. That is actually a harken back to the old arcade Mario Brothers. Where you had a, uh, a big POW in the middle that gave you all sorts of fun stuff. But you'll notice that jumping on people didn't kill them this go around. The star does, though. <laughs> Alright. Well, that was bad timing. Wiggle, wiggle. Alright. There we go. forgot to uh to mention crouching down would let you power jump in this version of the game <sighs> uh, when mr bomb is pulled he's nobody's friend That's right, that was the cheaty way to get to the uh, the end of the, uh, the match. To the world boss that you still have to defeat. Come on. You had this weird ostrich thing that you'd have to uh, pick up her eggs. And throw them at her. Yeah, you know, without the dying part. At least now I got full health. This side was always a little bit easier to uh, get it because they hung out over at the other end. They got a little bit more time to react. And then you play slots, because reasons. <laughs> if you could manage to get a cherry on the slot, then you get a free life. If you could match them, you got different things, depending on what you matched. Sweet. All right, just to give you an idea of some of the different characters, we'll choose the princess this time. I'm trying to keep an eye on time because I, I am getting a little wrapped up in the game and I got one more Mario Brothers I want to show in this segment before we get on to the next one. Oop. Without the dying. I said without the dying. Come 
on, pick up the coin. Ah, only two of them. Oh yeah, I still remember where a fair amount of stuff is. And if you wanted to press down without going into the pipe, you actually had to just hold an item. Because you couldn't go down to the pipe with an item. And these guys, they hunt you as long as you have the key in your possession. Uh, you also can't kill him. Oh, get in the door! <laughs> I mean, realistically for this one, I probably should have picked uh, Toadstool. Just because I'm going to need the reflexes to pick stuff up. Get... Oh! Ah! I... It was until I looked over into chat. <laughs> oh well. Alright, now where... There we are. Go, go, gadget memory. There we go. That was the princess's big thing, is that she had that weird hover. Alright. As much as I'd love to continue this one, I do want to get to Mario Brothers 3 before... Um... Yeah, no. There we go. No. Alright, load content... Yeah, I really wish I could have gotten the um, scan to go right. Users. It's a me. Alright, super more. No, I'm not going to do all these cartridges today. <laughs> I, I, I went and found a whole bunch of the ones of my youth, uh, and uh, not all of them are going to go because they, they don't make good show and tell kind of content. This was the pinnacle of Mario Brothers on the classic Nintendo. And it's where we finally see the culmination of a lot of really big things that would endure in Mario to come. Like, this is the first time we had an overworld map where you could go from level to level in different areas and you could actually have store power-ups for later. Um... And just all sorts of new firsts. You know, one one was still a big deal where you'll notice they're uh, slowly giving you the different items and enemies and things. There were all sorts of hidden stuff that, for the life of me, I don't recall. Got it. <laughs> and if you're really lucky, you can just kind of fly over the rest. But oh, that's right, that's the pipe I wanted. Oh well, it's a showcase. <laughs> and at the end of the world, you'd have this really weird tear, and you pick a card. The idea was to get three of a kind if you could, and you would get whatever those three, whatever you matched. So if I can get two more star cards at the end of the world, I would get a star. Oh yeah. There's all sorts of fun stuff. that You could also do fun things like scoot down a hill and knock stuff over as you went. Um, there's supposed to be a way to... I remember that there was some combination that you did to turn into a statue. 
But for the life of me, I don't remember what that was. Come on. There we go. There we go. <laughs> All hail the hidden stuff. There was also a way that you could uh, pick up stuff, which this was a first for the Mario end of things. I want to say it was you hit B as you ran into it. sorts of fun tricks. Now, back in the day, before there was a Wikipedia, you had to talk to your friends about how to do stuff. Like, if you always hit a full run by the time you hit the tear at the end and jumped at a 45 degree angle, you would always get a star. Because, look, we're talking about an 8-bit microprocessor. There's not a whole lot of randomization happening here. Okay. <laughs> So that was kind of round one for the the nostalgia trip. You know, the Mario Trio, the Mar Super Mario Brothers that launched the uh, Nintendo Entertainment System, or Famicom, outside of the U.S. Uh, for family console, in case you were wondering how they got the name. Uh, and, and yeah, th this is... This was the second or third game system I owned. I can't remember if I got the TurboGrafx-16 before this or after this. Uh, that part's a little fuzzy in my memory. Uh, but many, many hours were spent on this system. A lot of time spent playing the Marios. Um, and we'll get to some of the others as we go. Right now, what I want to do is I want to go ahead and... Hit the credits for a moment, and this is where I'm going to say if you're watching on YouTube, thank you for joining along. If you want to catch the whole go live, or you want to see, you want to interact in the chat that you saw down below my camera, head on over to twitch.tv, look for Anon Junior Live. There's a link in the description below, and that will take you over there. And we've got all sorts of fun stuff coming up. I stream Thursdays at 6 p.m. U.S. Eastern. I also do a Minecraft stream on Tuesdays at 6 p.m. U.S. Eastern as part of the Coffee Craft, in case you're wondering what that is on the YouTube channel. If you are with me live right now, hang tight. I'm going to hit the title credit. Or I'm going to hit the uh, title screen real quick, and then I'm going to gear up for round two. So uh, hang with me for just a minute. 